Hey friends, Route 20 Guy here, and this morning we are at Cemetery of the Evergreens in New Lebanon, New York. Why are we in a cemetery, you may ask? Well, there's a famous person buried here in this cemetery that we want to discuss. I think you'll enjoy. This is the grave of Samuel J. Tilden. He was a former governor of New York State and a presidential candidate back in 1876. If you look closely, there are some interesting things about his grave though. His epitaph, I still trust the people, is very interesting and worthy of a story of historic Route 20. Long before the presidential election of 1876, Samuel Tilden was a protege of President Martin Van Buren, the founder of the Democratic Party. Tilden even launched Van Buren's campaign for president years later as a free soiler. That split in the Democratic Party that believed all new territories and states should be free of slavery. When the southern states seceded, Tilden opposed civil war and was critical of Lincoln's Republican approach to bring southern states back into the Union. Stating the war was drawn out way too long, yet he still supported the Union during this time. By 1874, Tilden became governor of New York and successfully fought corruption within many state organizations and was popular amongst the people. This made him the popular Democratic nominee for the 1876 presidential election, where he faced Republican Rutherford B. Hayes from Ohio, another Route 20 president. In 1876, the Republican Party was still the party of Lincoln, the party that preserved the Union. However, it was in turmoil over some scandals and corruption brought by the Grant administration. Reconstruction, the Republican effort to bring the seceding southern states back into the Union with northern federal troops stationed in southern capitals and cities to enforce the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments and the civil rights of newly freed African Americans was a major hot topic issue in 1876. Hazer Tilden likely would end Reconstruction, but on different terms, and return all southern states to self-rule. Republican efforts coined the term Confederate Tilden Democrats to apply to former slave owners and proponents of secession who believed they found their Democratic candidate in Tilden as a smear campaign. Tilden gave very little effort to focus on Reconstruction and made his campaign based on anti-corruption, limited federal government overreach, and adopting the gold standard. Keep in mind that in 1876, the Democratic Party was a very staunch conservative party and the Republicans were seen as radical liberals. The campaign was riled with violence against African Americans at the hands of Southern Democrats to intimidate their votes, which Tilden immediately opposed. Southern Democrats felt that this was Republican retribution for punishing the South by allowing freed African American slaves the right to vote and hold office. On election night, 1876, Tilden had 184 of the 185 electoral votes needed to win. He led the popular vote by 250,000 votes, and all points seemed to focus on a Tilden win. However, Republicans challenged the final votes in three southern states, Florida, Louisiana, and South Carolina. Oregon was also in dispute. They began to accuse the Democrats of using physical intimidation and bribery to discourage African Americans from voting. Tilden led the African American votes, and this seemed irregular to Republicans as they felt that they were the party who gave them the right to vote. The scene was ugly to say the least. Several ballots turned in, had ink spilled all over them, so they could not be counted. Republicans refused to allow the count to be held at all in some locations to not allow Tilden to become president. And remember, at this time, Tilden only needed one more electoral vote to win. By January 1877, Congress established an electoral commission to resolve the dispute as the Constitution had no guidance. The commission voted 8-7 to seven to award all electoral votes to Hayes, denying Tilden his presumed elected role. Democrats threatened not to accept the commission's votes. However, secret meetings and deals were being hammered out amongst Democrats as they began to abandon Tilden and ignore the will of the voters for their own political gain. This led to the Compromise of 1877. Allow Hayes to become the Republican president and return give key roles to Southern Democrats in the cabinet. Immediately end remaining Reconstruction efforts and the national government would no longer intervene in Southern affairs. All Northern promises made after the Civil War were abandoned, 
implementing the era of Jim Crow laws, racial segregation, and the, and the disfranchisement of black voters for over a century to come. Samuel Tilden did not speak of ending Reconstruction often in his campaign speeches. He just didn't want to make it an issue. And it is not known what his presidency would have brought to the South. However, it is viewed that the abandonment to enforce the rights of African Americans would not have been seen. Tilden's popular vote remains today, and most historians agree that Tilden would have secured the Electoral College votes needed to become president. Tilden always claimed that he was cheated of his rightful role as president of the United States until his death in 1886, where we are still reminded at his grave, I still trust the people. His grave is easily accessible off of Historic Route 20, and you can come visit Sunrise to Sunset. We hope you enjoyed this video on Samuel J. Tilden, former governor of New York and a presidential candidate. Give us a like, share it with your friends, and follow us down below. And we'll see you in the next video on Historic Route 20.